Let's practice finding the chiral carbons, the stereocenters or the chirality centers in these six molecules. Before we get started, we're going to kind of put together a list of rules that we'll keep in mind as we're looking for. I like to call these chiral carbons, but it's the same thing as a stereocenter or a chirality center. So when we're looking for chiral carbons, we're only going to be looking at carbon atoms. We do not have stereocenters or chirality centers that are anything other than a carbon atom. So we'll ignore every atom that is not a carbon. And remember that our rule for being a chiral carbon is that it has to be a carbon atom with four bonds and they have to be four bonds to four different substituents. Not just four different atoms, but four different substituents. So let's look at our first example right here. Um, we are only looking at carbon atoms, so there are three carbon atoms in this molecule. Those are the only potential chiral carbons. And Every single chiral carbon is going to have four bonds to four different things. So we know right away that we can ignore a CH3 because it has three, three hydrogens on it. So we can ignore CH3s. And for this molecule, we have two CH3s, both of these guys out here. So neither one of them can be chiral. So now we're left to focus on this carbon atom in the center. And in order for us to determine if this carbon atom is chiral, we're just gonna ask ourselves what's attached to it. Well, it has a fluorine, that's one thing. It has a hydrogen that we can't see in the line structure, that's another thing. And then it has a CH3 and it has a CH3. Those are identical to each other, the two CH3s. And because of that, this particular molecule has no chiral carbons. None. Let's move on to our next example. So we're going to focus only on the carbon atoms. Here they are. And we're looking for carbon atoms that have four different things. I've already said we want to ignore the CH3s and this molecule has three CH3s in it. So we know that these three carbon atoms cannot be chiral. Likewise, we're also gonna be ignoring CH2s because a CH2 has two hydrogens on it and does not meet the rule of having four different things. So in addition to ignoring our CH3s, we're also going to be ignoring this CH2 right here, which just leaves us with this carbon atom um, and to determine is that one chiral. So we have to ask ourselves what's attached to this carbon atom. It has a CH3 and it has another, a second CH3 because it has, because this carbon atom has two CH3s we don't need to keep looking. It has two identical groups, so it also has no chiral carbons in it. This is not very interesting so far. Let's move on to our next example, see if it gets better. So here are all of the carbon atoms. Remember, chlorine cannot be chiral, only carbon atoms. And so we are going to ignore our CH3s. We're also going to ignore our CH2s. So we have it narrowed down to just this carbon right here. And is this carbon chiral? This carbon atom has an ethyl group. It has a hidden hydrogen. It has a methyl group. And then it has this CH2Cl. Those are four unique things, four unique substituents. So this carbon atom right here is chiral. As chemists, we do not have standard notation for indicating a chiral carbon. Sometimes you put a star by it, sometimes you just point at it with an arrow, sometimes you circle it like I've drawn. So there, you know, in, any kind of method that you can come up with for highlighting that chiral carbon is gonna be acceptable because we don't have a standard. So let's move on to this molecule right here. So here are the carbon atoms in the molecule. We're going to ignore CH3s, they cannot be chiral, and also CH2s cannot be chiral. So we're left to focus on this guy. Is this guy chiral? What is attached to him? There is a bromine. 
there is a hidden hydrogen, there is a propyl group, and a methyl. Those are four different things. So this carbon right here is chiral as well. Hopefully you guys are getting the hang of it. Now here's an example that's a little bit trickier. Um, so we have a lot of carbon atoms in this molecule that we need to analyze, a whole bunch of them. We already know that we're going to be ignoring CH3s and we're going to be ignoring our CH2s. Another thing that we haven't talked about yet is that we will be ignoring carbon atoms that are part of a double bond because in order to be chiral, you have to have four different substituents attached. And when a carbon atom is part of a double bond, it can only have three different things attached to it. And even though we don't have this in any of our examples, we also ignore carbons that are part of triple bonds for the same reason. They can't have four things attached. So knowing that, we're going to ignore the carbons that are part of double bonds. They cannot be chiral. We're ignoring the CH3s because they can't be chiral. And we're ignoring the CH2s because they can't be chiral. So that takes us down to just this carbon right here. And is this carbon chiral? Does it have four different things attached? This one is actually really tricky. It has a hydrogen, which we know is missing, and it or it's, it's missing in the drawing, and then it has this thing attached to it, which is different from the hydrogen. And then it has two bonds to a ring. When we have a carbon atom that is part of a ring, like this guy is right here, it's not instantly disqualified from potentially being chiral, we will treat that ring as two different substituents for this particular car carbon atom. We will treat it as a substituent that goes like this for this attachment. And we will also treat it as a substituent that goes like this for this attachment. Now you might be saying, wait a minute, that's exactly the same thing. It's not quite exactly the same thing. So let me draw that again. For this carbon atom, which is part of a ring, we will consider this as one of the substituents on the carbon atom. And then we will also consider this as the second substituent on that carbon atom, plus the hydrogen, plus this thing as well. So our question is, if we are this carbon atom and we are moving around the ring in this direction, is that exactly the same as if we are moving around the ring in this direction? Well, the double bond and the methyl group that are part of the ring are gonna help us make that determination. So if we're this guy, we are, our substituent in this direction is a CH2 carbon-carbon double bond. And if we go in the other direction, it's a CH2, CH2, carbon-carbon double bond. So we can see that this direction around the ring is different from this direction. Because these two directions around the ring are different, we will treat that as two different substituents, which makes this carbon atom chiral. And that's pretty tricky, so we're going to need to practice that quite a bit. We have one more example to look at right here. We have a whole bunch of carbon atoms in this molecule, but right away we're going to eliminate the carbon atoms that are part of double bonds because we know that they can't be chiral, and the CH2s, which cannot be chiral, let me make sure I find all of them, and the CH3 cannot be chiral as well. So that leaves us with four potentially chiral carbons. Now I am going to highlight all four of those potentially chiral carbon so that we don't lose any of them. We don't forget about any of them. This guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. And we need to figure out if all four of them are chiral. So let's start with this one right here. What's attached to this carbon atom? There's a hydrogen, as we know, that's not being drawn. And then we have a lot of rings. So we have this ring that immediately attaches to a benzene ring. That's one thing. And then we have this way around the ring, which is not attaching to a benzene ring immediately, so that we know that this direction and this direction and our hydrogen, those are three unique things. Then we have this direction, again we're focusing on this guy, 
which ultimately will attach to this five-membered ring, which is also unique. So we have a hydrogen, we have an immediate connection to a benzene ring, we have an eventual connection to a benzene ring, we have a connection out here to a five-membered ring that will never connect us to a benzene ring, that four different things makes that carbon atom chiral. What about this guy down here? Is this chiral? Well, we know we have a hydrogen on this. We have a bond in this direction, which is going to be sort of an intersection between a five-membered ring and a six-membered ring. We have this particular point of attachment, which is a connection, a fusion between two six-membered rings. And then we have this guy right here, which is only part of one ring. So again, these are four unique things for that particular carbon atom, which does make it chiral. How about this one right here? This carbon atom, this is going to be easier to analyze. It has a methyl, it has a hydrogen, it has a five-membered ring to its right and a six-membered ring to its left. So those are four unique things, which makes this one chiral. And we're down to one more, this carbon atom right here, a hydrogen, a five-membered ring on the left, a six-membered ring on the right, and a fusion in between a five- and six-membered ring with a methyl group sticking up top. So these are, again, four different things, which makes this carbon chiral as well.